Aliens excited and intrigued people. Unfortunately, these reptile-based beings from outer space were destined to hyperspeed warp into many people's bulk piles due to the terrible mechanics and gameplay using counters. So unlike the cool aliens you see in movies like The Predator, Destroy All Humans, or well, aliens, think more of the Coneheads bunched into an archetype with an incohesive strategy. This and more will help you understand easily, and we mean easily, why the aliens failed in the TCG. Our extraterrestrial friends travel to Earth in the TCG set Power of the Duelist. The archetype introduced A counters, another form of counters that can reduce the attack and defense of a monster that battles an alien monster. The effect is only applied if the monster has a reminder text on it on the field, which is the nice text in parentheses that tells you what effects applies when the A counters are placed on monsters. The A counter attack and defense reductions are cumulative, and if you have multiple aliens with the reminder text, they'll all add up. This sounds great on paper or cardboard in context, but you'll see why this doesn't help out aliens very much. The first of the seven aliens introduced was Alien Grey, a level 2 light monster with 300 attack and 800 defense. It is a flip effect that places an A counter on one monster on your opponent's side of the field. Then, if it's flipped and destroyed by battle, you get to draw one card. Alien Skull was a level 3 wind monster that could be special summoned to your opponent's side of the field by tributing a level 3 or lower monster on their side of the field with an A counter. If special summon this way, place an A counter on it. Alien Hunter was a level 4 water monster. When it destroyed a monster with an A counter by battle, they can attack once again in a row. Alien Warrior was a level 4 earth monster. When it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, place two A counters on the monster that destroyed it. Alien Mother was a level 6 dark monster that lets you special summon a monster with an A counter that it destroyed by battle. When this card is removed from the field, the monster is special summoned by its fact they're also destroyed. Now, not all the monsters had alien in their names, including their spaceship, Flying Saucer Musakil, which was a level 5 light machine monster. When this card is face up on the field, you can add an alien card from your deck to your hand instead of conducting your normal draw during your draw phase. Finally, Cosmic Horror Gangill was a level 5 light reptile that can be normal summon with one tribute if you tributed a monster on your side of the field that your opponent owns and once per turn, it can place an A counter in one of your opponent's monsters. The first lineup of alien monsters was all over the place. That's nothing new for any archetypes in 2006. They did have the honor of getting a direct searcher in Musikil, which many decks didn't have in 2006 outside of battle searchers that needed to be destroyed in order to get your cards. It's honestly a good thing they got a built-in searcher since their attributes were all over the place. Unfortunately, the card needed to be tribute summoned, and it's search at the cost of your draw phase making it hard to get non-archetype cards that could help you in your game state. There was more support as they got three traps in Power of the Duelist. Crop Circles was a normal trap that by sending any number of monsters on your side of the field to the grave, you can special summon an alien monster from your deck equal to the levels of the monsters sent to the graveyard. But if you fail to find a monster, you take 2,000 damage. Orbit Will Bombardment was another normal trap. By sending an alien card on your side of the field to the grave, you can destroy one spell or trap card on the field. Brainwashing Beam was their continuous trap that lets you take control of one of your opponent's monsters with an A counter. During the end phase, you remove a counter from a monster, and if all the counters are removed from that monster, or if that monster is destroyed, you destroy this card. Both Bombardment and Crop Circles had costs that were not worth the reward. Crop Circles is a self-board wipe with no real payoff. And a funny thing about Crop Circles is that by game rules, you can't actually activate the card unless you know you have a search target on your deck. So it's one of the only cards in the game with a failure effect, because most cards just simply resolve without effect if the game state changes after you activate it and can no longer resolve it. Bombardment was non-targeting backfield removal that cost you an alien monster with no means of getting it back. This was made back in the day when MST was limited to one, and all archetypes had their own MST replacement. And most of them were as bad as this one. Aliens had no recovery to make up for whatever was lost which would also be one of the alien's most significant weaknesses outside of the fact that A counters were easy to get around. Brainwashing Beam was the only good card of the bunch, and was the reason aliens saw some play in Duel Links when aliens were added to the mobile game, although it wouldn't be super usable until one monster that came out later in Cyberdark Impact. Alien Mars was a level 3 light reptile with a thousand attack and defense. While it's on the field, the effects of monsters with A counters in the field are negated, except for Alien Mars. Alien Infiltrator was also introduced, this Earth level 2 reptile would allow you to move to an adjacent unoccupied monster zone. If that zone has no spell or trap cards, the monster can attack directly. A walking skill drain does sound appealing to pop in your deck. A counters could hinder your opponent as long as this monster was on the field. It was just the fact that a thousand attack doesn't scream unbeatable. Almost every monster that was used in 2006 was able to get over a twig like Mars. 
protecting this monster from being swept off the field could cost constant resources and be tedious to protect. Infiltrator, on the other hand, was Infiltrator and didn't see play as it didn't help advance the deck's mechanics and had a gimmicky effect. Aliens also received a card that made counters called Corruption Cell A, which is a normal spell card that plays one A counter on one of your opponent's monsters. What's more appealing than praying for normal spell cards that could brick up your deck and wasn't searchable? Taking up deck space just to have one that only gives one counter already and screams bound for jank. You'd have more benefits just using Grey and Warrior to receive a counter and additional effects on a card that is useless in later stages of the game. So in over two sets, the deck had enough pieces for you to form a deck. Was it consistent? Of course not. Playable? Barely. This would be the tone for the deck going into Storm of Neos in 2007, as they received two more pieces of support. Alien Psychic was a level 1 Dark Reptile monster. On normal summon, it's change in defense position, and when it's face up on the field, monsters with 8 counters can't attack. A solid stall card if you're in a sticky situation. However, with how slow the deck applies 8 counters, your opponent could easily just play another monster and cut down your monster, which had an enormous 100 defense. It was laughable when you saw that the deck had wish value floodgates built inside monsters. Unfortunately, the need for 8 counters and low stats doomed them from having an impact. A Cell Scatterburst was a quick play spell card that lets you select one alien monster on the field and destroy it, then distribute 8 counters on your opponent's monsters equal to the level the monster you destroyed. While the card could give you more 8 counters to use, it was yet another card in your spell and trap card lineup that cost you a monster and board presence to use. And even then, this card was often a one of because players just desperately needed more options to get counters out. This struggle wouldn't change for Outer Space Friends as we marched to Force of the Breaker. This set would give them no new monsters, but gave them new spell and trap support, including their field spell, Otherworld, the A Zone. This field spell made your opponent's monsters lose 300 attack and defense if it battled your alien monsters. A Cell Breeding Device was a continuous spell that lets you place one A counter on one of your opponent's monsters during the standby phase. Finally, their continuous trap, Mass Hypnosis, lets you take control of up to three of your opponent's monsters with A counters on them if you control an alien monster but the card is destroyed during the end phase. Now, the field spell is absolutely lackluster compared to field spells of today. And even for its time, the field spell was very mediocre. Otherworld didn't see any play. A cell breeding device was slow, but A counters were the key mechanic, and with the deck still struggling to maintain counters, it was added to decks as it was the only option of having consistent counters every turn. Mass Hypnosis was a far better brainwashing beam, if that's any consideration. Since the card lets you take up to three of your opponent's monsters just by controlling an alien, it made it excellent for interrupting your opponent's plays, even if it only lasted until the end phase. Why it's a continuous instead of just a trap card is outside of our realm of understanding, but it was obviously done to give it some counterplay with MST. We can understand that this deck still couldn't keep up with the meta or even compete. Tributing so many monsters made it easy for your opponent to foil your A counters. Monarchs had no problem getting rid of your feeble cells, and other decks had versatility and game plan that wasn't dependent on a core mechanic. Plus, the core mechanic wasn't even rewarding. Losing 300 attack and defense isn't alarming unless you had multiple counters and monsters with the reminder attacks, and both of these were the issue that the deck had, because unlike counters of today like cubic counters which have effects when placed, A counters only had effects if monsters on the field specifically gave them effects. So if an alien monster like Alien Mother was on the field and your opponent had one A counter, it wouldn't do anything because Alien Mother didn't have the reminder attacks that gave the A counter its stat lowering effect. However, the support continued to be given to aliens throughout all of these problems and didn't help the deck improve. Tactical Evolution would introduce the best alien monster to date, Alien Shock Trooper, a level 4 reptile normal monster with 1900 attack and 800 defense. Yes, their best monster is a level 4 normal monster. This Garnet never saw play in aliens, but rather in other strategic decks. Its high attack power for level 4 made it great in beatdown and control strategies. He would later see playing rank 4 toolboxes with Rescue Rabbit, as our favorite bunny could search out two of them and allow you to make rank 4 plays of your choice. I guess you can say Aliens did have a card that impacted the meta, a moral victory for the archetype, as for it being a contender, it was still a no-go. Gladiator's Assault gave us one of the most unique archetypes in the game, Gladiator Beasts. This archetype could tank in and out of the deck during the battle phase, and it's too bad this video isn't about them. Here are three random alien cards in the pack and a picture of the alien Gemini monster. Alien Hypno was a level 4 water reptile with 1600 attack and 700 defense. Its Gemini effect lets you take control of a monster your opponent controls with an A counter on it during your main phase. And during the end phase, remove a counter from it, and when that monster has no more counters, destroy it. Alien Telepath was a level 4 reptile that lets you remove an A counter from your opponent's monster to destroy a spell or trap on the field. The latest spell support was a Cell Incubator, 
This continuous spell lets you place an A counter on a card whenever an A counter is removed from play by a card effect. If this card is destroyed, you get to distribute the counters on it amongst other face-up monsters on the field. Now, there was a Gemini beatdown deck in the meta that made its way to the scene later in Yu-Gi-Oh! Alien Hypno was not part of any lists or any alien decks. Gemini monsters are considered to have one of the slowest game mechanics ever, needing you to use up one of your only normal summons for the turn to give them their effects. Combining that with an archetype that already had trouble getting more monsters in the field deemed this card unplayable. So it was Incubator's slow effect to get counters. This card would sit on the field for decades because people read cards back in the old formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! It relied on being destroyed, and more so than likely, you'd be dependent on your opponent to pop it, which they wouldn't. Telepath sounds good on paper, but whatever it can do, Heavy Storm Mystical Space Typhoon can do better, and without a real cost. At this point, it would be easy to call aliens a dud, but Konami wasn't quick to halt the support, as they would add some solid support to the archetype in the TCG set Crimson Crisis in March of 2009. Alien support in Crimson Crisis helped the archetype step into the world of synchro summoning. Their tuner was Alien Ammonite, a level 1 light reptile that on normal summon, special summoned a level 4 or lower alien monster from your graveyard. Alien Kid was a level 4 light reptile that placed one 8 counter on all your opponent's special summon monsters when they were summoned. Alien Overlord was a level 6 dark reptile that can be special summoned from your hand by removing two 8 counters from anywhere on the field, and then once per turn could place one 8 counter on all your opponent's monsters. Finally, to round out the new monster support, Cosmic Fortress Golgar, a level 5 synchro monster requiring an alien ammonite plus one or more non tuner alien monsters. Once per turn, you can select and return any number of spell and trap cards to the owner's hands and then distribute new 8 counters onto monsters equal to number of spell and trap cards returned. You can also remove two 8 counters on the field to pop one card your opponent controls. Alien Kid was a solid benefit, hitting monsters your opponent special summons with counters. Ammonite could easily make their synchro boss by itself and bringing back Alien Kid or any other level 4 alien monster. Overlord was a body that could be special summoned with the simplistic condition of just removing two A counters. However, the deck still generated counters slowly outside of Kid. While the support was generally better, it didn't come without drawbacks. The main one being Ammonite needed to be normal summoned activated as effect and to special summon a level 4 or lower alien. Also, counters staying on the field was another issue. The synchro summoning mechanic made it easy for opponents to remove any counter infested monster using them as a synchro material. So in better terms, the monsters were the definition of subpar, and so were the spells and traps they got in Crimson Crisis. Mysterious Triangle was a quick play spell that lets you destroy a monster with an A counter on it, and then special summon a level 4 or lower alien monster from your deck, but it's destroyed during the end phase. Code A Ancient Ruins was a continuous spell, that lets you place an A counter on this card when an alien monster is destroyed. And once per turn, you can remove two A counters from anywhere to special summon an alien monster from your grave. And finally, Planet Pollutant Virus was a trap card that lets you tribute an alien monster to destroy all monsters without A counters on the field. And until the end of your opponent's third turn, place an A counter on all monsters that they summon. Though these effects were finally solid, the main problem was that the cards weren't searchable. You had to hope to draw into these cards. The deck operated at a snail's pace, which wouldn't cut it in the synchro era. There are no searchers, no way to get your cards consistently, mediocre monsters whose effects don't impact the field, and a synchro monster who can only be made with aliens and is dependent on A counters, and is bound to see little to no actual play. Even if on paper it seems really busted with being able to reset soft once per turn effects, like Code A Ancient Ruins to summon back more aliens from the graveyard. Aliens stayed the course of being a jank deck you could build for 50 cents. Later in 2009, Raging Battle gave Alien Kid his best friend. Alien Dog was a level 3 light reptile. When you normal summon an alien monster, you can special summon it from your hand and place two A counters on your opponent's monsters. It's always great to have extenders. However, the effect of placing A counters is useless going first, and you couldn't special summon this card unless you normal summoned an alien monster. Still, mediocre extenders are better than no extenders. So this card is included in pretty much every single alien deck to this day. Every little bit helped alien monsters. The cards that came out in Absolute Power Force didn't, however. Alien Brain was a new trap card. If a reptile monster is destroyed by battle by an opponent's attacking monster, take control of that monster. That monster becomes a reptile monster. This effect was actually not half bad, since stealing a monster is one of the better effects you can do. But not being half bad is not exactly a good selling point. Needing your monster to be destroyed by an opponent's monster is too conditional. Your opponent could just use many options outside of battling to eliminate your monsters. This can make it a dead card that could take turns to activate. This would be a sad note for aliens as they wouldn't receive any support for over 7 more years, until they randomly got support in Invasion Vengeance. 
A Cell Recombination Device was a quick play spell card that lets you target one face-up monster on the field, send an alien from your deck to the graveyard, and put counters on that monster equal to the level the monster sent. During your main phase, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it to add an alien monster from your deck to your hand. While the card had both necessities that aliens needed bundled into a soft once per turn card, they seem to have mixed up the good effect for a graveyard effect, which was search power. Not only did the A counter effect make this card only good for going second, but the search effect couldn't even be activated right away, causing you to wait a whole turn to get a search. So when they finally got a search card, it ends up on a card that can't even help you immediately. However, in Duel Links, this card was released alongside the alien archetype, and in a slower paced and much lower power level version of the game, this card was basically the only reason they saw competitive play. Alien Stealth Buster was a level 4 reptile monster, which was introduced in Duel's Overlord, that, when sent to the graveyard, can target and put two A counters on a monster on the field. And during the main phase, except the turn it's sent to the graveyard, you can banish it in order to target a monster on the field with A counters and destroy it. Alien Shock Trooper Imfrain was their first Link monster. It requires two reptile monsters to make, and Link arrows were diagonally left and right. Once per turn as a quick effect, you can discard a monster to place A counters on your opponent's monsters equal to the level the monster discarded. If this card is destroyed and sent to the grave, you can special summon non-Link Reptile monsters from your grave equal to the number of monsters your opponent controls that has A counters on them. At least the archetype can say it has good Link support. It had generic requirements to summon and can float into any non-Link Reptiles, which made it great for other archetypes that dabbled in cold-blooded lizards, from reptilians to later introduced and hard to pronounce Ogdoatics. So not only was it a win for aliens, it was a win for other generic reptile archetypes. Well, more so a win for them since aliens were still hot, flaming, universal garbage. Although, if you think this link was good, wait till you see what boss they got in Dawn of Majesty. Cosmic Slicer Zeral was a lengthy reptile that requires two plus reptiles for its summoning. Your opponent's monsters with A counters are changed to defense position, and neither player can activate those monsters' effects. Its hard once per turn effect lets you add a card from your deck to your hand that has the effect that places A counters. You can also remove two A counters from the field to add a reptile monster from your deck to your hand. Yet another skill drain for the archetype. Unlike Mars, this card was better in terms of attack and took less effort to protect on the field while shutting down your opponent's monsters. It also fetched you A counter based cards to further help its effect that turned off monsters with A counters like Planet Pollutant Virus. To sweeten the pot even more, the monsters are switched to defense position, stopping your opponent from attacking your monsters, including Zeral. They just seem to have forgotten links can't be changed to defense position, meaning it's possible for your opponent to summon extenders and link climb into a monster bigger than 2600 attack. It was also easy to get rid of those A counters again due to the multiple types of extra deck monsters you could make in today's game. So in order for this card to work, you also needed to get the effect of Planet Pollutant Virus running, or get Alien Kid on the field so newly summoned monsters would have A counters placed on them immediately. And with this, aliens finally had a workable strategy. That is, to floodgate your opponent out of monsters. Only one with a ton of moving parts needing for it to work, and fragile to basically all board breakers known to man. So the card had a good effect, and it helped the reptile pile with the control aspect. But the current game makes the game plan around Zeral fragile and breakable. The final card introduced to aliens from Age of Overlord is IAS Invasive Alien Species. This level 4 light reptile monster with 1600 attack can't be destroyed by battle or card effects when your opponent controls a card in their field zone. If your opponent has a card in their field zone, you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it, and if you do, this card gains 1000 attack. If this card is in your grave while your opponent controls a card in their field zone, you can special summon it. Now, while there is a ride in good field spell cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, it isn't good to have another effect that needs your opponent to control a specific card, especially for an effect that just pops a card, which in today's game isn't as powerful due to countless floaters and cards that can't be destroyed by card effects or are unaffected. What also seems to be a big factor is that we aren't sure if IAS is part of the alien archetype. It seems more of a card with alien in its name, as its effects don't operate around A counters at all. Either way, this card doesn't see play for both reasons, as it's an awkward to use anti-field spell card. So our Martian friends didn't pan out in Yu-Gi-Oh. Even with the ability to combine them with other reptiles like Ogdoatic and Reptilian, you'll find out the best way to run aliens is by not running any at all. The deck's A counter dependency is one of its worst banes. Placing counters on your opponent's monsters makes this deck automatically second turn based. Counters don't really do anything impactful unless they're rolls on the field, and it's simply too easy to play around counters due to the many different styles of summoning you can do from the extra deck. Add in the fact that the deck only has one extender and alien dog, one tutor and alien omnite, and a searcher that can only be activated the next turn it's sent to the graveyard, 
and you have a recipe on how to make aliens look lame. They did see some results as a deck you can get through Duel Links thanks to having an invoke package, but by the way this video went, you can guess which engine carried who. Maybe one day Konami will give us better support for our struggling humanoid friends. But until then, expect this archetype to be lost deep in space.